Okay, so I thought I could go over very briefly uh, the Michaela Semenson assumptions and why we make those assumptions and how everything, like the theory behind Michaela Semenson kinetics, uh, before I make a few other videos on like the different types of inhibitors and how they affect the rate of your enzymes. But uh, I wanted to first start off and explain why we make the assumptions and what's the ES, the, the ES complex and how everything works. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to go over a little bit of a background uh, just to explain how we came to these assumptions and how everything works the way it does. So before there was Michaela Semenson, uh, scientists knew that if, let's say, we had some enzymes inside of a reaction beaker and we went and inserted some substrate right over here, right? They saw that if you add a substrate into something that had the, the enzymes, the enzymes would then convert the substrate into its product, and you will get a certain amount of product, right? So all these enzymes could be creating your product. So if I put this on like a graph and measured the substrate concentration versus reaction velocity, as I increase the substrate concentration, I should get more reactions happening per second, and I should get more products over time, right? But they noticed that the more substrate they added, right, initially they would get more and more products. So initially there would be a linear increase with the concentration of substrate and the reaction velocity. But after a certain amount of time, they noticed that if they added even more and more substrate, right, they noticed that the reaction would kind of plateau off and they would get to like this maximal velocity, right? It would get to like this maximal rate. So if I drew this out, this would be kind of like a Vmax. They noticed that it, they, it, this reaction really got to a maximal velocity. So they realized that the rate of your reaction could not depend only on your substrate because if it only depended on the concentration of your substrate, your reaction velocity should always linearly increase with the amount of substrate you put in. But because it's plateauing off at this Vmax, that they didn't know exactly what was going on. But because they saw that it was plateauing off, the rate had to depend on something else. And that's where Michaelis and Menson came along, right? They came along and they said, oh, the rate or the maximal rate depends on something called the ES complex. And they hypothesized that all reactions undergo a two-step process where the first step is this binding step, right? So you have your enzyme and substrate that come together and undergo binding to form your ES complex, right? And then you have the catalysis step where the enzyme then converts that substrate into your product. So instead of it having where your substrate comes in and immediately turns to product where, and that's what they used to think, they, Mikhail Cementin realized that there's this two-step process where your substrate comes in and binds first, and then it forms your products through a catalysis step. And because there's, two different steps, you have different rate constants associated with each step. So K1 refers to your binding, okay? K minus one refers to unbinding or disassociation of your ES complex to enzyme and substrate. Then K K2 is your catalysis. And then K minus two is I'm just going to put undoing catalysis. I'm sure there's another word for it, but going back to your ES complex, okay? So they realized that there are these four um, factors that they needed to account for. And because they realized that there was this ES complex, they couldn't experimentally still isolate the ES complex. It was something that was hard to see. It was very hard to visualize in the reaction class. But they knew that there was this ES complex because when they made that model, all the mathematical data, when they conducted other experiments and they were trying to see the rate of the enzymes, they noticed that the mathematical data fit this model that they hypothesized. And it wasn't until like 15 years after where um, scientists were able to visualize an ES complex and then it confirmed their Michaelis and Menten's theory. But in order to get to that final Michaelis and Menten equation that uh, we are going to be using in our class, you have to make some assumptions in order to simplify the formula. And that's the whole point behind why we have these assumptions is because it's a two-step process and it depends on a lot of rate constants, K1, K negative one, K2, K negative two. Um, we wanna have these assumptions to simplify the model so that we can get an equation that's not only easy to use, but it's useful for us, 
okay? So we come to these three Michaelis Menten assumptions that I'm sure you've seen in class. So I'm gonna go over the basics of each one and see how it affects our formula and how it helps us get to a simpler formula, okay? So the first assumption is that we're gonna make the concentration of our substrate much, 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 much greater than the concentration of our enzyme. So by doing this, if we make the concentration of substrate much, much greater than the concentration of enzyme, so if I do this, right, what's gonna happen is that as soon as my reaction starts, this is gonna ensure that my enzyme is gonna be saturated with my substrate, okay? And that catalysis is gonna be my rate determining step. So let's think about it like this. If I had some kind of reaction flask and I had, I'm gonna make these Pac-Man things some enzymes. So these are my enzymes, right? If I put a much, much greater concentration of substrate than the concentration of enzyme, so you could think of it for every enzyme that I have over here, I'm just gonna put a bunch of S's. Maybe I should make it a different color. Notice how if I outnumber the enzymes with the concentration of substrate, I can effectively say that as soon as you put the substrate inside the reaction mixture, the enzyme is gonna automatically get saturated with your substrate so that you form your ES complex immediately, right? Because any of the substrates that are floating near the enzyme will just bind there, okay? So that, that means that now when I'm thinking about the binding versus the catalysis step, the catalysis step is going to be my rate determining step. That's going to be the slower step. And you remember from your general chemistry classes, if we had like kind of like a funnel right over here and whatever is that slowest step, that's gonna be your rate determining step. That's gonna determine the rate of your reaction, right? So the catalysis step, because we have so many substrates compared to enzyme, we're gonna be able to ignore the K1 and K minus one or the binding and unbinding. We can effectively say that all of our enzyme is going to be bound to substrate so that all we have to worry about is the catalysis step. Okay, so that's the first assumption. The next assumption is that we're gonna make is that we're gonna be measuring at V naught. What V naught is, it means it's, we're measuring at initial velocity. Now you could think about it like this. If we're measuring at V naught or the initial velocity, or like that first second where you put, when you put the substrate into your reaction mixture, do you think you're gonna have any products in that very first instant, like that very first instant that you put the substrate in? Well, you're not gonna really have any substrate or any products, right? Because the products form over time. So if we don't have any products in that first, first second, right? That means that are we gonna have any backwards reaction to go undoing catalysis or K minus two? No, if we don't have any products, we can't go backwards, right? So that means that our K minus two is gonna be close to zero, or approximately zero. So to resummarize what we have until now, well, we kind of already said that we can ignore the binding and the unbinding step, right? Because we're basically effectively saying that because our substrate is much greater than our enzyme, we're gonna form our ES complex immediately. And now we're saying that because we're measuring at the V naught or the initial velocity, we're not going to have any backwards reaction. So the K minus two is also zero. So all that's left and all that we have to consider in our formula, because this is the rate determining step, is this, these two factors over here. And that's why up to now, we're gonna say that the V naught is equal to K2 times the concentration of ES. Now you might say, well, that's perfect, but look at that formula, it's very simple. We can just use this and we can, now we can measure the rate of a reaction and see how fast things are going. Except you also have to remember, uh, when we, the concentration of the ES complex is something that's hard to isolate. Remember we said that Mikhail Simensen, when they first hypothesized this, they couldn't even see the ES complex. It was something that they just hypothesized. It was, it was just uh, a theory. And then obviously the model fit the theory and then they confirmed it later. But measuring the concentration of the ES complex is something that's very, very hard to do, okay? So, by making this third assumption that our ES complex is at steady state, and this third assumption is kind of uh, following the first assumption, but by making this assumption that the ES complex is at steady state, right, we can say that this is a constant concentration because steady state tells us that something is constant, even though it's not actually constant. Um, over time, the concentration of ES complex was gonna be decreasing because we're gonna make product. But effectively, if we're measuring at the V naught or the initial velocity, the concentration we can effectively say is gonna be constant and it's gonna be at steady state. Now, if we say that this 
con concentration is constant. I can make another video, but you can look in your textbook. We can then relate this factor, the concentration of ES complex, to other variables, and we can simplify our formula so that now instead of measuring the now instead of having to measure the concentration of our ES complex, we can measure the concentration of our substrate. Because remember, the substrate concentration is something that you know what you're adding, because you know exactly how much substrate you're going to be adding into your reaction mixture. The concentration of your ES complex is something that's not easily seen or easily reportable. Okay, so by making that last assumption, we can then go and make other simplifications. And I can make a video on how you get from this formula to this final equation. But because we can make these simplifications, and by saying that the ES complex is at steady state, we can then use algebra and use uh, a so, or equations to then uh, get to this final equation where the initial velocity is equal to the Vmax times the concentration of substrate over the Km plus S. Okay, so we, with these three assumptions, we can get to this final formula. And now this is great because you can think of it that now we know if we add this amount of substrate, our initial velocity is going to equal that amount. The only thing that we need to know is the Vmax and the Km, and um, there are book values on the Km values and stuff like that. But again, let's just understand the terms that are found in our equation. So Vmax, again, remember when we were talking about this earlier, that artificial plateau that they saw, the Vmax, this is when all enzymes are saturated with substrate. So you could think of it like this, that all of the enzymes that we had over here, we're going to be putting so many substrate around them that there, there aren't any more things that can help catalyze reactions because our enzymes were the things that were helping catalyze a reaction. Whenever we reach that, when we reach that maximal velocity, it doesn't matter how many more substrate we put in. It's like, we already have all these substrates here. It doesn't matter all it's the reaction is going to be occurring as fast as it can because all those enzymes that were free, they're already going to be bound by substrate and you're forming that ES complex. So you're going to be limited by the number of enzymes you have. Okay, so we're going to say that our Vmax is going to be when all of our enzymes are saturated with substrate. And then the Km, which I'll make another video about, but the Km is the substrate concentration required for the initial velocity to equal half of your Vmax.